Welcome back to a brand new episode of Collider Dailies. I am your host today, Maggie Levitt, checking in from The Matrix. And joining me for her Collider Dailies debut is Tanya. Why don't you tell the audience a little bit about yourself? So I'm the executive editor uh, of TV, our TV section at Collider. And I just cover a lot of TV with our fabulous team. And I'm excited today to talk about movies with you. So um, yeah, looking forward to it. Yeah. Yes. Lots of movie talk and a little bit of TV talk that we'll throw in at the end. Yeah. So what are some of your like favorite fandoms that you get to interact with on Collider? So uh, I love, obviously, first of all, you do a great job with the news section. There's so many things. Every time I'm reading, there's things I need to know about. Obviously, the, the fandoms I love the most are like ghosts. I love watching that on CBS. Um, I love a lot of the Marvel stuff. So I'm excited. We're going to dive into that later, too. Um, but, you know, there's just there's so many different things. I feel like it's a mood ring. You know, when you start to love different things. So, yeah, I've been I'm a huge comedy fan, a huge comedy nerd. Uh, a lot of things, Conan, uh, a lot mm -hmm. of community, a lot of The Office, you know. So a good comedy is something that I, I definitely love too much of. Yes, I feel like we need lots of laughs in yeah. uh, today's day and age. Yeah. Uh, and today we're going to be talking about some things that don't make us laugh. These are all very <laughs> dramatic shows that we're going to be right. talking about. Uh, so towards the end of the episode, we're going to talk about that new picture that we got from the Daredevil yeah. Born Again set, which I am very excited to talk about. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then we're going to talk about Fantastic Four and the crazy casting announcement that came out yesterday, which I'm so excited about. Yeah. Yeah. But to kick things off and to fit in with my my Matrix vibe, we are going to talk about the big news story that broke yesterday while we were actually doing Collider Dailies, which yeah. is Matrix Five is happening. Can't what are you, what were your immediate thoughts when that got announced yesterday? I was so I was actually really shocked just because I feel like they ended it off really well. Um, you know, we get to see Neo and Trinity going off together, hopefully in a rainbow atmosphere. You know, skies, rainbow skies. But I I don't know if I'm gonna be so. I have to see it to believe it. Drew Goddard's a great director. He's somebody who a lot of us have had, you know, lo we've loved his, you know, projects before, Cabin in the Woods, all that. But I feel like, you know, it's just different. It's going to be very, you know, um, outside of the realm of what we know. The, the movie was so phenomenal. It's a huge part of our pop culture zeitgeist. Mm -hmm. um, but the fact that we are getting another one, I just don't know much mo what more of the story there could be. Um, on the counter of that, you know, I feel like it, the whole thing about AI surveillance, mm -hmm. technology versus man, it's an ever going conversation. It's going to be something we can always rely on. But um, what is that conversation going to be? How interesting will it be? That's going to be the next big question. Uh, and can we actually maintain that interest? Like we're going to have Keanu Reeves in the movie. Are we going to have mm -hmm. Carrie Ann Moss? We don't know. Exactly. Um, there's a lot of questions also about like who's going to return. We have so many avenues from what happened in Resurrections mm -hmm. uh, that we can dive into. There's the analyst, you know, the Oracle, um, yes. you know, and then going back all the way to the train man, you know, like, are we going to have like all these people come back? Are we going to start to see maybe different um, sections of the matrix, you know, uh, but that's just, yeah, a lot. And what did you think about it? I, so I loved Matrix Resurrections. Uh, I thought it was fantastic. I love that it was basically like a coffee shop AU. Yeah. Um, like <laughs> that was like my, the biggest thing that I took away from it. Yeah. I do, I love the Matrix. It's, you know, obviously been a franchise. It's been around like my entire life. Yeah. I think I was actually really surprised by this news. At first when I saw somebody mention it, like in the comments yesterday, I was like, that doesn't sound real. Yeah, It was real. And I guess, you know, in hindsight, maybe I should have expected it. Um, I was pulling up some numbers about how well uh, Matrix Resurrections did in theaters. It made 157 million worldwide. Yeah. And that was in December of 2021. So we were still in a really weird place for theaters on the tail end of, you know, pandemic restrictions lifting and things kind of coming back to theaters. Um, so I guess that is a pretty fantastic success um, at the box office worldwide. It did better internationally um, than it did here. But I mean, if you're looking for IP that has lots of brand recognition, this is something we've talked about with like the Godzilla franchise. Yeah. Like, does it have to be a perfect, fantastic movie? Or is it just because people know these franchises and they're going to come back out for them because they do have this like emotional attachment? So I think there's a, a, a certain degree of that play. Mm -hmm. uh, I am, you know, relieved to see that um, Lana is coming back to yeah. executive produce. So you have at least her kind of oversight, her experience mm -hmm. with this franchise and creating it with her sister that we're going to get at least some follow through there. Yeah. But yeah. You know, People in the comments right now are asking, you know, like, is it going to be a clean slate? Something like that. And I think, 
I almost think that's maybe a good idea to yeah. start fresh as a not a not a reboot, yeah. a soft reboot with a new cast because Keanu and Carrie Ann have other things that are going on right yeah. now uh -huh. in their careers. So maybe they don't want to come back. Maybe they want a cameo. Mm -hmm. But it does seem like a franchise that could continue to expand. Yeah. So I guess we shouldn't have been surprised. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's it's great IP. Like this is something where, you know, we have obviously for years, everyone can quote this movie. There's scenes from it that really like this, this is a film I feel like set the tone for a lot of different sci-fi genres and sci-fi mm -hmm. films. Um, one of the things that I think is so interesting though, is like, you know, you said about fans, you know, are we just in a though cater to the fanfare of things? I feel like that's mm -hmm. the issue we need to know about. Is the story going to be strong enough? You know, sometimes we can have these things where we've got movies that are part of a, a, a great IP, um, but, you know, just kind of chopping up more movies. You know, we've seen it in so many different, I'm not even going to note them, but there's so many it's different so many. movies. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we both, there are franchises that we love that they've made other movies that we just didn't like. Yeah. And is it worth it? Is it worth it for the integrity of what that movie is? I think like most recently, maybe we can talk about it and yeah, uh, Ghostbusters it. was one of those movies that mm -hmm. you know we, we love that movie growing up but did we actually need these other additional yeah. stories I don't know like that's going to be the thing with um the Matrix like yes is it gonna be a world now of people just covered in USB ports <laughs> travel <laughs> adapters who knows um but there's <laughs> it's gonna be it's gonna Probably be really useful different. actually <laughs> very useful they are um but no I, I feel like because it goes back to the, you know these the the note everything has a beginning and everything that has a beginning has an end mm -hmm. so, is there an end to the matrix? You know, it feels like there isn't. <laughs> so maybe Absolutely. it's just a very intricate matrix. So that's why we're not really going to see the end. But um, I, I think it's going to be exciting. I, I just, I'm curious what's going to happen, what where the story is going to go, what the casting is going to look like. Um, but it, it really boils down to the writing. It has to be super sharp. Drew can do a great job with direction. Mm -hmm. But if he does not have strong material to work with, it's going to be... Um, and he's the one writing it too. So I'm like, hopefully yeah. he has the ability to do both because sometimes we've yeah. seen writers, directors take on too much. Yeah. The directing and the writing can sometimes kind of overwhelm you a lot when there's, you know, a lot of different factors going in, especially if, you know, Warner Brothers has a really clear image of what they're wanting this to look like. And it might be in discontent with what their vision is for the, you know, story. So... I guess we'll have to wait and see. Um, mm -hmm. I, I do want to call out one comment from mm -hmm. um, the chat. Love this idea. The major should reboot it. Keep with all of the, the R titles uh, for the, the, the sequels. And there you go. That's the yeah. title right there. You hear yeah. it here first. <laughs> that should be it. Definitely. I love that. Um, hang on. There we go. Mm -hmm. uh, so now we are going to move on to uh, something that I feel like is actually very fitting for today because it is actually Fantastic Four Day. It is yeah. April 4th. Uh, so we are talking about the Fantastic Four casting mm -hmm. that happened yesterday, which yeah. is Julia Garner, mm -hmm. the cast of Fantastic Four as the Silver mm -hmm. Surfer, which yeah. has already been making lots of waves in discourse online. But Tanya, what was your first take when you saw this news? So first of all, I'm very excited Julia Garner is going to be Silver Surfer. She is fantastic. Um, Royal Hotel, <laughs> Royal Hotel, um, Ozark. You know, she's really coming into her own. And I think, you know, she's such a talent that's going to really come to like bigger eyes with, you know, the Marvel Universe. Um, I love this whole thing because, you know, uh, Matt Sh uh, Shakeman, he, uh, Shackman, is it Shackman? Shackman. Um, yeah, he uh, has come from TV, you know, WandaVision. He's directed a bunch of Game of Thrones episodes. He's, mm -hmm. um, you know, had a, lo a long storied history in TV. And I love that TV writers, when they get into directing, it's such a different realm because we actually, as viewers, get so much more from them because they mm -hmm. have that background. Um, there's a lot more detail when it comes to TV because they have to, you know, do a lot of things. There's, you know, taking 30 minutes of a TV episode, you know, cramming all the story in. And, you know, the fact that he's won uh, awards for WandaVision also, he's yes. the universe before. So um, I think, you know, we're in good hands with Fantastic Four. And I think Julia is going to really shine as this silver shirt, surfer. So, you yes. know, unintended that she's going to shine. But, um, you know, I think she's going to actually really, you know, take this role for what it is. Obviously, this is another character. This is a variation of the other um, Silver Surfers in the multiverse. And um, I'm sure this will cause controversy <laughs> with a lot of people. But, um, Maggie, what did you think? I'm really excited about this. Um, you know, I think that given the fact that we've had 
two previous iterations of the Fantastic Four. I like that we're not getting like the cookie cutter variations of the same stories we've already seen. Yeah. Um, I was really excited that they also led with the information that she is playing the Shellaball version of the character. Mm -hmm. um, that character was first introduced as like the Empress of Zen Law, and she went on to become a love interest for the Silver Surfer. But in a miniseries set on Earth X, she was Silver Surfer. So that kind of gives us maybe some clues as to where things are going with the actual plot of the story. Mm -hmm. And then we also know that, you know, one of the big aspects of her character in the comics through almost every run of that character is that she faces off against Galactus. Yes. Um, he usually is like threatening her home world because she's like a humanoid alien. Mm -hmm. um, so clearly we're getting Galactus and there mm -hmm. were a couple different reports yesterday from Deadline and Variety that were very clearly hinting at the fact that Galactus is most likely going to be the big bad yeah. of the Fantastic Four franchise, that apparently it hasn't been cast yet, that they're keeping mm -hmm. their options open, which tells me that they're still maybe developing where that character could go as we're getting mm -hmm. closer to production. But I did think it was really interesting that today Marvel put out five um, or four free ep free issues of Fantastic Four. Way too many numbers. <laughs> they put out four free hmm. issues of Fantastic Four comics in honor of it being Fantastic Four Day. Right. And it is intended to keep people getting ready for the movie. And so I think that once people have some time, I have not had time to go back to read these specific issues. It seems like maybe they're trying to like set the groundwork for like what the story is going to be about. So the suggested reading was Fantastic Four issue one, which was in 1961. Fantastic Four issue 48, which was the first appearance of Galactus and Silver Surfer. Mm. And then um, Fantastic Four Life Story number one. So there's definitely some stuff that we need to start reading, dig yeah. into, see what we can find about mm -hmm. what Marvel is trying to hint at, you know, the direction things might be going. Yeah. And to be perfectly honest, for me, as somebody who is a well-known Marvel cynic, mm -hmm. I actually, this is the first time that I felt really engaged in things because it feels like everything's not super secretive this time. Like they're giving us more information with the casting information. They're pointing us in directions of like things to look at, to get excited. We're getting all the stuff that's happening with like the Daredevil sets and like yeah. stuff that's happening. And I think that this is a really smart um, move because yeah. it doesn't seem like they're trying to squash too much of like this information that's kind of out there that I think maybe we're seeing a pivot in terms of Marvel's marketing to try to be more grassroots feeling, more fan focused. And I think, that's the way forward. Yeah. And that has me the most excited. This feels like old school Marvel in a yeah. lot of ways. It, it's so interesting you say that because I feel like it's that they're, they're being so confident in telling us all this information. And it kind of makes me think that this is going to be one of those movies that sets the universe up in a different direction. It's, it's going to, it's going to be leading the, the, the charge the way the Avengers movies did. And, um, I think that's going to be something exciting to see. Obviously, we have a great cast. An yeah. amazing cast. Yeah, we have Vanessa Kirby, even Moss, uh, Moss Backrack, and we have Joseph Quinn, who everybody <laughs> just loves. He's like our boy of the, of the century. Um, but no, I, I feel like there's so much, you know, they're, they're building this up, and it's something that I think, you know, a lot of us can be excited about. Mm -hmm. um, it does feel like, you know, it's going to it's going to launch the Marvel universe in a different direction. I really do think this is going to be, you know, we had all these other movies, we had those TV shows, a lot of them were failures. Um, but you know, we don't have to talk about those shows. They're on Disney plus. We can watch them. Um, not all of them were great. And um, you know, that's something that I think a lot of the fans were just disappointed with because they were such great characters mm -hmm. and then to give them, you know, pl to plot them into stories that were just not strong enough. Um, you know, the movies have always been so superior and then just to kind of have TV shows that were not great, but, you know, with this direction now, I think we can really reset things yes. and we can actually really see a different direction for what Marvel should be, you know, because it is such an amazing IP and it is such a great, you know, piece of pop culture history. I mean, I would not complain at all if they completely reset where they were headed with some of the other Marvel yeah. movie concepts that were clearly being laid up. If they yeah. just invest completely into the Fantastic Forecast and what they can do with that, that family could very easily be your next Avengers. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you have the star power there in the same way that the original cast of the Avengers had that not like they are not a listers, but they have huge followings individually and together mm -hmm. that kind of makes it like an A-list cast. Yeah. We think that there's so much potential with this idea that's going to be set in like the 1960s. Yeah. There's a lot of like fun stuff that you can really get into that would set it so far apart from the Avengers era that you would yeah. have like such a fresh new like 
play field to you know playground to you know a whole field to kind of play with and explore and i'm very excited for that i'm very excited there's gonna i feel like there might be also parallel stories that run you know when we see something because it's in the 60s so are we gonna see tony stark's dad like I mean, Howard stark somewhere who knows might yeah. Be really fun. yeah. I'm so excited. Okay. I'm going to pull a couple comments mm -hmm. from the chat because obviously John is here joining us from the comments. Uh, and I love this. I, all I need is for Galactus to not be a cloud this time. Yeah. This is very true. And mm -hmm. I have seen a lot of people theorizing that Galactus, depending on the storyline they go with, it could be old Franklin, which if you know, you know, mm -hmm. that could be a really interesting storyline to yeah. dig into. So maybe they'll go that way yeah, maybe it'll be somebody entirely different because yes yeah. there has been these rumors that it could be javier bardem who mm -hmm. i would love to see be in marvel i think he's fantastic oh, yeah. oh he's so great and i think he could be a great villain um mm -hmm. as a known villain lover i do i do love my villains to be hot so right. javier bardem does fit mm -hmm. that category right. quite well does. um but it's just it's so exciting that mm -hmm. there's this whole new it feels like a, a, a reboot yeah almost because it's so fresh it's so new it's in a completely different era and i yeah. just it has me excited again which i haven't been super excited about marvel since like a long time America. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, I, and captain america these origin stories before yeah. it got like too big and convoluted the, like mm -hmm. those were the ones that i was engaged with so i'm very excited yeah it's, it's gonna be great the, the, the 60s that's gonna be a nice era to play with i think the costume design is gonna be amazing uh the color the vibrancy the whole palette that tableau is gonna look yes. really good. It's yeah. really cool. And I love the posters they've been putting out for it. The one uh -huh. for, you know, the announcement for the cast and then the yeah. one that's out today for Fantastic Four Day. Mm -hmm. um, it just is very cool. The aesthetic is perfect. I'm yeah. very excited. I'm, I'm also really excited for the merchandise. Like I'm already thinking about like the lounge fly backpacks and like the pins, the exclusive park pins and like all of the things they can really yeah. lean into with this entirely different aesthetic. So yeah. I'm very excited about that. And I'm also, yeah. go ahead. I really hope they don't push the date. It's gonna be July, 2025, right? Yeah. So so hopefully. allegedly they're gonna be filming soon. So I guess we'll know sooner or later if they're gonna meet that deadline. Um, yeah. But it also means that like, maybe we'll get some information at San Diego Comic-Con. Like if they start filming in enough time, maybe we'll do first looks. Maybe yeah. they'll come back to New York Comic-Con. I'm, I'm holding out hope that New York Comic-Con will once again be Marvel's like place to unveil things because mm -hmm. We're getting so much information about Daredevil Born Again. Look at that segue today, guys. I know, <laughs> segue there. Huh. Um, and so much was always kind of yeah. unveiled for the entire Daredevil uh, kind of universe at mm -hmm. New York Comic Con because it's so heavily based in New York yeah. City. And that leads me to our last topic of the day, mm -hmm. which is just hours after we finished yesterday's Collider Dailies, where I was saying I desperately needed a picture of Frank Castle and Karen Page together again on set. John Bernthal delivered mm -hmm. a, a lovely set image of he um, he and um, Charlie Cox and uh, Deborah Ann Wall sitting back, I guess, behind the scenes on a, a, the night they were filming. <sighs> it brought everybody back to life again. Now, I know you have not watched Daredevil yet. No, I have not. The last Daredevil I watched for everyone's disappointment was 2003's Daredevil. <laughs> so hey, I'm just saying, I like that Daredevil too. Yeah, I am pro Ben Affleck. So mm -hmm. yeah, me too. <laughs> and to talk about another, like Garner, Jennifer mm -hmm. Garner as Electra, yeah. loved her. That was yeah. my like concept yeah. of Electra. Mm -hmm. um, but I do want to know, as somebody who yeah. isn't invested in Daredevil, the way mm -hmm. that so many of our coworkers yeah. are. Of course, they're they're obsessed. <laughs> they're obsessed. Yesterday's Slack, I just have to note, yesterday's Slack went chaotic <laughs> because everyone was like John Bernthal. <laughs> so John Bernthal, yeah. Castle, Karen Page. It was great. Yeah. I love to be surrounded by a bunch of Castle fans. Yeah. I love that my phone was going off like crazy mm -hmm. yesterday with people messaging me. Yeah. The entire timeline on Twitter was going wild with all the Castle babes. <laughs> Everybody was back. Uh -huh. But I want to know all of this excitement, all of this like chit chat about yeah. uh daredevil that's been going on has it made you interested in going and watching it on disney plus it has honestly it, this is one of those shows i've always had on my list to watch and i just never find time and i'm that terrible person who will re-binge a show i've already watched and i don't know why i do it i just do but i have wanted to watch this for a long time and then when it you know went off netflix and i was like oh no where is it gonna go and it finally went to disney plus now's the chance i'm gonna do it like it there's there's so much there i love that daredevil character i think he's great um i've not been you know so uh 
you know, understanding of like the Punisher character. I've never really mm -hmm. watched it. I never really read the comic books. Um, but Daredevil was somebody that, you know, I, I got into because my brother used to read the comic books when I was younger. So I knew about him and I already was like, okay, this is why I understand this character. But I just, I, I would love to know more. And I would love to know as a fan, you know, as, as you're a fan, you know, what can you tell me for convincing me to watch a show? Like, especially fans who are going to be new to it, people who have Disney Plus. So I always say that Daredevil and Punisher were mm -hmm. the best Marvel shows that were ever on television. Yeah. Like I liked Shield, Agents of Shield. I watched some of the Agent Carter show, but in terms of what was on in that era, I think that Netflix had it. They were doing yeah. it. They were making shows that were gritty, that were um, a very emotionally um, fulfilling. There was a lot of character arcs, full character arcs. There was yeah. you know, long seasons that gave time to the characters to develop, you know, both big moments like the beautiful one shot action scenes that the show became kind of known for, but also quiet moments. Yeah. And that's something that I crave so much in media is mm -hmm. I want to see the characters like shooting pool after a hard day at work. I want to see them going out to drinks after somebody just got like the crap beat out of them. Yeah. I want to see those like very human moments that make yeah. the characters, um, characters that you keep wanting to come back to that become comfort watches in the yeah. same way that like, it's very funny to compare these two shows, but in the same way that like New Girl is a show that I go back to and like comfort watch, yeah. <laughs> Daredevil and Punisher became those shows because those characters had so much time to like take flight inside of me like they, yeah. they you know put roots in themselves like of themselves into like who yeah. I am as a person because yeah. they had so much humanity in them and I think that was what was lacking in some of like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. for me I didn't necessarily yeah. feel emotional attachments to those characters except for Grant because again I like bad characters right. <laughs> but I have to say if you like like relationships and yeah. hero like media which again is mm -hmm. not really in a lot of the mcu yeah. like there's so much there with matt murdoch and his relationships with karen page with claire temple with electra mm -hmm. and then you have his like friendship with foggy and then you have frank castle who is just like one of the best interpretations of this character ever like the the like humanity that John Bernthal brings to him, the thought and care that was put into his storylines and his plots. Like there's, there's just so much. And I think if you yeah. like good storytelling, you should watch Daredevil and Punisher. Also Jessica Jones, Luke Cage. Yeah. Iron Fist and Defenders, even though people didn't necessarily like those, they are still better than some of the best MCU shows. Like, yeah. So that's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it aligns really well just because like these are characters that are so there's so many different layers. They are mm -hmm. so nuanced um, to kind of give them that TV format works. That's yeah. what makes it work so much. Like you, you can, you don't have to have that so much with like, Captain America or, or you know, mm -hmm. Iron Man. You get those in the movie and that's enough because yeah. the, whoever they are speaks for it. This way, you know, getting to know these characters, I feel like that's what makes me want to watch it because I want to see stories that are very just seasoned well. Um, there's a lot of flavor to these. There's, it's just nuanced. You need to have a story that that's what it is with TV, right? You just need, you want them to be a lot more detailed, stretched out to the point where it's and you can understand and connect with that character. Yes. So that's something that I'm I'm very looking much I'm very much looking forward to. I, I yes, know I'm gonna watch it. it. I know you will become a Frank Castle Karen Page <laughs> like the rest of us. I can yeah. send some fan videos to like set you up to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> for them. There's just, and they're not even like an actual relationship, but they're still, again, a better relationship than some of the actual relationships we've seen in Marvel, which yeah. speaks volumes. And that's why I was so excited at the confirmation yesterday that clearly Karen and Frank will have some sort of scenes in Daredevil Born Again. It's been yeah. so long. Um, okay. These are characters that have like, I have mattered to me since 2017 and have mattered to this entire fandom. And I think yeah. it's it's really cool that we're getting so much, you know, content from them because John posted it and then Deb reposted it and it just, everybody was so alive. When was the last time you remember seeing people that happy about a Marvel property? Yeah. That nobody was fighting. Everybody was just excited and crying and screaming and puking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, like, we've seen that before and I yeah. hope that Marvel is watching and I hope that they're yeah. seeing the way that people are reacting to this and kind of maybe going back to those roots. Yeah. And, so perfectly with our conversation about Fantastic Four, you know, getting yeah. back to what fans care and like and like gravitate towards. So I'm really happy to, to be here talking about Daredevil Born Again again. 
Mm-hmm. I see I worked my, my title into it. <laughs> you did. Uh, can't wait to have you come back on to Collider Dailies after you've watched Daredevil and Punisher mm-hmm. so you can actually give us your thoughts yeah. on it. Because I would love to know this many years later mm-hmm. getting into that fandom and seeing that for the first time. Yeah, I would love to do that. That would be awesome. Yes. So as we wind down on today's episode, is there anything that has recently come up on uh, Collider this week or you have coming up that you would like to tell the folks watching about so they can go see any interviews or reviews or any content that you've put out lately? Yeah, so obviously we have uh, so much Shogun coverage. Shogun has been such an amazing show. We are so excited for what more we're going to get from this. Obviously, X-Men has been amazing it has been something that all of us at at work i think we're all just so like we're thirsting for it it's really good um so there's so much coverage on on x-men um we've got a bunch of interviews coming up obviously steve has himself busy with like Mm -hmm. a lot of movie interviews but um we also got you know our our lead news uh our our lead um uh tv editor uh carly having covering a lot of uh she's gonna be covering bridgerton soon so we'll be excited about that we're very excited. It's it's gonna be a fun season for TV. We have a lot coming up, and um, yeah, Collider Collider's features and our resources and news list, everything we've got so much for you guys just to tune in. But do you have anything that you've recently done yourself? Anything cool? Do I have anything? Um, I've got uh some. I've got a set visit coming up, so Ooh. that should be fun. It's for reality TV. It's for Crime Scene Kitchen. So very uh, excited. Yeah, if everyone's excited for that, and um, yeah, just you know. A bunch of things. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, we're, things are still in the pipeline. They're still cooking. Excellent. Uh, for myself, I uh, just posted my interview with Tom Felton this morning. That was a really great conversation looking back at Harry Potter. Uh, and he's just wonderful. Um, it's always really great when you get to interview somebody who like, he's not that much older than me. So like, I feel like I've grown up watching him on screen and then to like actually meet him and talk with him and yeah. see that he really is just as like wonderful and delightful as he appears to be, which was yeah. great. Uh, and then tomorrow I have my junket for Rob moon i know i'm the only person excited for it on the internet but i'm very excited to get to talk with zach snyder tomorrow and the cast i already have my nemesis in uh i noticed for it so i'm very excited for that but i will say all of that will be spoiler interviews so you will not see them on the site until after the movie is out already seen part two and i have to do all spoilers because i have so many questions for everybody so we look forward to that in about two and a half weeks okay perfect i have to ask you what is your uh harry potter house what is your hogwarts house (laughs) i'm slytherin (laughs) Slytherin? okay (laughs) are you gryffindor no, I'm a Hufflepuff. <laughs> that makes sense because Slytherins and Hufflepuffs always work well together because they balance each other's qualities. So that makes so much sense. That's exactly. Yeah, that, make, that makes a lot of sense. I love that. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you everybody for tuning in. Be sure to like and subscribe uh, if you haven't already. So you are always here and ready for the next episode of Collider Dailies. I'm not sure who is hosting tomorrow. So you will just have to wait and see like the rest of us. I know it won't be me because I will be talking to Zack Snyder. So be sure to tune in tomorrow and be surprised and find out who's here hosting tomorrow. (laughs) So until then. Sounds good. Bye guys.